In this video, we're going to take a look at modifying Atwood's machines. Now, modifying Atwood's machines are anything where there is some kind of a pulley and two objects strung across the pulley, but not in the typical Atwood's machine way. Right, The typical Atwood's machine would just be two objects hanging on either side. Um, there's something that changes the problem or modifies it. The most common is going to be a pulley that's attached to the edge of a table and then one block is being pulled to the right while the hanging block goes down and the pulley rotates in that direction. Let's take a look at an example problem to see how to approach and solve this. A three kilogram mass is attached to a two kilogram mass by a rope as shown below. There is no friction between the three kilogram mass and the table. When the system is free to move, what is the tension in the rope? Okay, so the first thing for us to notice is this. There is no friction between the three kilogram mass and the table. That means here, there is no friction. Now, the reason why that's important is because if there was friction, then maybe this system would remain at rest if you just let the two kilogram block hang. But because there's no friction, what that means is that there's going to be some tension in this rope. We'll call it T. And there's nothing acting to the left. There's no friction to balance that tension. So it doesn't matter how big the two kilogram hanging block is, there is going to be some tension in the string, and therefore the three kilogram block is gonna move in the direction of that tension. In fact, it's gonna accelerate. So that's the first thing to notice, the no friction. That means that this won't stay at rest, it will move. And it will move in the direction of the two kilogram block. So I'm gonna erase this tension real quick. We'll draw that in a second. Um, and let's focus on the direction of acceleration for each of these objects. The two kilogram block is going to accelerate down and the three kilogram block is going to accelerate to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw these arrows indicating the direction of the acceleration on my picture and then I'm gonna write plus A so that I remember what the positive direction for each object is going to be. Now that is how I'm going to determine in my net force equations whether something is going to be positive or negative. Okay. Now at this point, what we're going to want to do is take a look at the forces that are acting on each block and then write equations of net force for the two blocks. It will be beneficial if we decide that one of them is block A and block B, or maybe block one and block two. So I'm gonna call this three kilogram block, I'm gonna call this block A, and the two kilogram block I'm gonna call block B. Now immediately to write down um, the fact that I've done this and to make sure that I can remember it, I'm gonna say MA equals three kilograms. That reminds me the three kilogram block is block A, block A. And MB, is two kilograms to remind me that the two kilogram block is block B. Of course, you could say M1 and M2, but uh, whatever. Okay, so I've written down the masses um, as block A and block B. And of course, we're gonna use G, the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared in this problem. So I can write that down if I want to as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the forces acting on each object. Um, if I was going to draw all the forces just on the actual objects, I'm gonna have the weight of the two kilogram block going down, we'll call that MBG. And there would also be a weight for this three kilogram block, <clears throat> which I would call MAG. And now I think about tension. So there's tension in this rope. There's gonna be a tension T pulling the three kilogram block to the right. Um, and that same tension is going to be experienced by B, the two kilogram block, but this time it's going to be up. Now this tension is going to be less than the weight of the object because what the rope does to the two kilogram block is it, it just sort of resists as it falls down. It pulls back on it, but not enough to actually keep it up um, or to s slow, really slow it down. Um, and I'm going to also note that the tension is equal on both sides of the pulley. And we're allowed to say that as long as the pulley is ideal, right? So T is equal on either side if the pulley is an ideal pulley, meaning it's massless. 
We'll talk about what to do if the pulley has mass in um, a, a, another unit. Okay, so tension is acting up on the two kilogram block, but to the right on the three kilogram block. So then that asks or begs the question, what is balancing the weight force of the three kilogram block? Well, that's going to be the normal force. And I'll erase this maybe to give myself some more room. That's going to be the normal force acting on that block right there, which I would maybe call NA. Uh, and I don't need to know this right now, but the weight of this block and the normal force, they would be equal. Very shortly, we're going to see why that's important, because the normal force is going to help us um, calculate the friction that could be on an object. But you don't know how to do that yet, so just chill and draw it and don't think about it. The big deal here is that the normal force and the weight force, they don't contribute to the unbalanced or the net force acting on the 3 kilogram block. So let's work on that. If I was to think about the net force acting on block A, well, it's just tension. That's it. There's nothing um, that's going to be pulling to the left, and tension is an unbalanced force. And of course, we said the acceleration is to the right. That makes sense. So since the tension is in the same direction, I make this positive, not negative. Okay, easy. For B, I have the weight down and tension up. So should I make T positive or negative? Well, since the acceleration is down, then that means I need to make T negative. And I would instead say the weight, MBG, minus the tension, T, is my equation of net force. Now, remember, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. We set these things equal to the equation for um, net force on each object. So for the net force, on A, that's the mass of A times the acceleration, and the net force on B, that's the mass of B times the acceleration. So just to keep things kind of clean, um, I'm going to just get rid of this and skip ahead and say, oh, okay, so I know the net force on A is just the tension, T, and it equals the mass of A times the acceleration. And then I'm going to take this information here. And similarly, uh, write that down. I know mbg minus t equals mb times a. I'm going to erase all of this. OK, so pretty soon you're going to be getting to a place where you can just write this system of equations um, by looking at the problem. And you don't have to, to put down so much work. You know that the tension is the unbalanced force acting on the 3 kilogram block, so it's equal to the mass of that block times the acceleration. Just write that down. Hopefully you're getting to a place where that's starting to um, kick in and make sense. Okay, so what do I do with this set of equations? Well, ultimately I want to find the tension, which means I need to figure out what this acceleration is first so that I can plug it back into an equation and find t. So to do that, I'm going to add the left and the right side of each equation so that I get mbg minus t plus t, where the t's cancel out. And on the right side, I'm going to get ma times a plus mb times a, the acceleration. And again, remember the acceleration of both, um, it's the same, so I don't need to write a, 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 b. It's, it's all one shared acceleration, so I can just write it as a. Um, and this problem, to get the acceleration by itself, what I do is I factor the masses out. And now I can write an equation for the acceleration. I divide both sides by ma plus mb. That gets rid of that term on the right side. So let's erase that. Okay, good. So this is my equation for the acceleration. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write, or rather, I'm going to plug in um, the masses and g to get a number for my acceleration. So the mass of b is 2 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, divided by the mass of a is 3 kilograms, and the mass of b is 2 kilograms. 
So 20 over 5, which 20 over 5 is 4. So the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. Now let's do our blue cl blue's clues moment. If I know the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared, what do I do with that? Where does it go? How do I find the tension? Over here, over here. You just plug that acceleration into either equation and find t. So let's do that. Let me get rid of this work right here. Okay, so the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared, so let's plug that into this equation to get the tension. The mass of A is 3 kilograms, and the acceleration is 4 meters per second squared. Therefore, I know the tension is 12 newtons. Boom. And that's the answer to the problem. This video is done.